90% of the feeding fish can be found in just 10% of the water on any given day. So it's up to us to figure out where that 10% zone is. Now, one of the factors in the winter that really becomes critical and I think is often misunderstood is the impact of wind on the water temperatures. So I'm going to dive into that real quick and show you how to factor that in to hopefully get you into that 90-10 zone the next time you're out there fishing on the water. Now I'm going to do that by just showing you a map and talking about a couple of different scenarios and talking about the impact of the wind on the water temperatures. Now, water temperatures are critical in the winter time. They're critical all year, but in the winter time it becomes even more important. As the water temperatures drop, oftentimes the fish are going to look for more comfortable areas. So they're going to move into deeper water and they're going to try to sit underneath a thermocline where the water temperature is more consistent. So as you have these 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree nights, and the water temperature starts to drop down deep, it's actually going to hold a little bit more consistently for them and it becomes more comfortable. And oftentimes what helps to determine that 90, 10 zone when they start to feed is where the water temperature is the warmest or has warmed up the most relative to the rest of the water in the area. So that's where wind comes in. And that's a really big factor at this time of the year. So let's take a look at the map here. And I'm showing you right now on the Smart Fishing Spots app, which is the software that is available to Salt Strong Insider members. I'm looking at a marsh area. This marsh area, as you can see, has a lot of channels running through it. It has a lot of creeks. And then if we throw on a layer here, we can see that it also has a lot of depth changes within it. So I'm going to use the shaded relief for that. So let's zoom out for this. And you can see right here, you can see the depth changes in here. The green is deeper. The shallower is the orange. You can see in this channel, there was a consistent drop in depth and there's a deep channel right in the middle. So both sides are going to set up very similarly as far as structure. So let's talk about the wind and let's run a couple of scenarios here. Let's say in this scenario, we want to fish in somewhere in this area here and we have a east wind and the east wind is going to go from right to left and we have an outgoing tide, which is going to bring the water from top to bottom. So all of the water in these creeks will be draining out. And then we have the wind sweeping across in this direction from right to left. Well, there's something that you need to consider about that. You have a wind blown side of each channel and creek and you have a wind protected side. So let's define those quickly. Wind protected means that the water that is right up against the edge of this marsh is going to be protected from the wind. So if it's an east wind coming from right to left, your wind protected side is going to be that east side of each channel and creek because the wind will be broken as it comes off of the land and you will find a calmer area that's not stirred up from the wind real close there. Now the wind blown is just the opposite. So if it's an east wind, it's the west side of that channel or that creek. So that would be over here on this side. You will see that out on the water because the wind is going to be coming across the water. It's going to turn it up. It's going to push it against the sod bank here, against the marshes, and it's going to be stirred up. Now, why is that important? Well, it's really simple. When you think about the interaction of air and water, on a wind protected side, the wind is not churning that water, which means that it's not exchanging the heat from the air or the cold from the air with that water. On the wind blown side, it is. You have the stirred up surface, you may have some chop, you have the, the waves or the, the riffles breaking against the sod bank, that's breaking the water and that's allowing the air, either warmer air or colder air to get into that water and that's going to impact the water temperature in that section. So let's say the wind is coming from the east to the west, we have 40 degree water temperatures, but the wind is blowing at 20 degrees. So any wind blown area that is being hit by this 20 degree air with this 40 degree water is going to be cooled faster than a wind protected side. So in that case, when the wind is colder than the water temperature, you're typically going to want to look at the wind protected side in order to get the best benefit of the water temperatures. They're not going to drop as quickly in that section as they are on the wind blown side. Conversely, if the wind is blowing from the east and it's blowing at 60 degrees, but the water temperature is 40, well, the wind protected side is not going to heat up as fast as the wind blown side because you have that exchange of the air and the heat in the air with that colder water on the wind blown side. So if you want to look for the higher temperature, you want to look for the wind blown side. It's very simple, but it's, it's something that a lot of people don't understand or they just don't think about when they're on the water. So if you're out there, the water temperatures are 
cold. The fish are sluggish. They're stacking up in the deeper waters and then they're looking to feed. You might want to take a look at the side that is going to have the biggest benefit for those increased temperatures in that area. If the air is warmer than the water temperature and the wind is blowing, look for those wind blown sides. And if the air temperature is colder, than the water temperature. Look for those wind protected sides. Those will stay warmer longer. Hope that helps you out. Now use this to get out there, get on the water and get some tight lines.